Water is a vital natural resource in southern Idaho. The mighty Snake River, multiple dams, and the Snake Plain Aquifer have turned the desert into an Eden for agriculture. Well, you know, it's one of the great success stories in the West. As we irrigated over the years, it brought great wealth to the state. Idaho became famous for their potatoes. As the Snake River flows across southern Idaho, it provides water for agriculture, hydropower, drinking water, commerce, and industry. The Snake Plain Aquifer, a deep source of groundwater, extends from St. Anthony's to Thousand Springs near Hagerman. The aquifer is recharged by the Lost River's snowmelt, irrigation canal seepage, and 19 other tributary streams. At Thousand Springs, some of the nation's largest freshwater springs flow with pristine water at a perfect temperature of 58 degrees. The springs support many rainbow trout farms and other agriculture products in the Hagerman area. Uh, Clear Springs is the largest trout producer in North America and probably the world. Cities and towns across the Snake Plain region rely on the Snake Plain Aquifer for drinking water, serving about 300,000 people. Industrial and commercial businesses in the Snake Plain region depend on surface and groundwater for their operations. Idaho Power Company produces 8.2 million megawatt hours of electricity at 17 hydroelectric projects in the Snake River Basin, enough to power more than 650,000 homes. On a normal water year, we get about 50% of our generation that we generate from our hydro plants. So that is our cheapest form of fuel. It helps keep our customers' rates low and uh, it's renewable and it's clean. All told, the Magic Valley and Eastern Snake Plain regions contribute approximately $15 billion to Idaho's economy, about 33% of the total state economy. In the early 1900s, when many acres of the Snake Plain were cleared, plowed, and irrigated to raise crops, scientists learned that the discharge at Thousand Springs was directly linked to the Snake Plain Aquifer. We've always known the aquifer is connected to the Thousand Springs. Um, back when the irrigation canals were laid in across the Snake River Plain, uh, one of the things that occurs with all unlined irrigation canals is that they all leak to, to, to one degree or another. We saw groundwater levels rise and spring flows increase out of the Thousand Springs. But it was first tracked by the United States Geological Survey as far back as 1912. What we saw was what we call incidental recharge, which is uh, losses from canal systems through just their normal operation of delivery of water to irrigation. We ended up with basically a supercharged aquifer, if you will, over, over the years between 1912 and about 1952. And then in the 1950s, as groundwater wells tapped the aquifer for irrigating crops, the discharge at Thousand Springs decreased over time. Groundwater development uh, that started occurring in a big way for irrigation and other uses with the advent of pumping technology and uh, power supplies. The federal government offered cheap land. Idaho Power offered low-cost power and the state offered water rights to farmers for irrigating crops. A lot of factors converged that all, all uh, resulted in the development of about almost a million acres of land irrigated by groundwater during that period of time. Over a 50-year period, Snake Plain aquifer levels decreased by about 12 million acre feet. Many farmers used pivot sprinklers for irrigation, which is a more efficient use of water. One acre foot is the amount of water it takes to cover an acre of land one foot deep. The change from flood irrigation to more efficient sprinklers, the reduction of water deliveries in unlined canals, and groundwater pumping all combined to reduce the amount of seepage and recharge to the aquifer. As it became more efficient, we started taking more water out of the aquifer than we had in it. Due to concerns about dropping aquifer levels, the Idaho Department of Water Resources placed a moratorium on new groundwater development in the early 1990s. 
But even today, the Snake Plain Aquifer is being overdrafted by about 200,000 acre feet of water per year. The reduction in spring flows at Thousand Springs hurt companies like Clear Springs Foods, which has senior water rights dating back to the 1920s. We've been concerned about the steady decline, steady drop in that resource for a number of years. We did make a water delivery call. Water rights are managed in Idaho under the prior appropriation doctrine, meaning first in time, first in right. The Idaho Department of Water Resources is required by law to honor those senior water rights. Over the last 27 years, the Snake River Basin adjudication evaluated all the water rights in the basin. A final decree was issued in August 2014. It was the largest water rights adjudication completed in U.S. history. Today, water management in the Snake River Plain is entering a new era. If a water user with senior water rights believes that he is being harmed by water users with junior rights, he can make a water call. For example, an aquaculture company made a water call that affected many groundwater pumpers with junior water rights. So that means if my farm or my fish hatcheries not getting the water the state told me I could have, the next guy has to shut his water off till I get my water. Well, the call it came up was going to shut down 157,000 acres in the Magic Valley of farmland, 500 dairies, and 14 cities. To avoid a massive catastrophe, the Idaho Groundwater Appropriators, a group of groundwater pumpers, raised $3.8 million to buy clean spring water from another fish company and pipe it uphill over the Snake River Rim to Rangan's fish farm. We are in the process right now of trying to work out uh, either settlement agreements or a long-term solution for uh, uh, aquaculture facilities down in the Higgerman Valley. Overall, uh, the groundwater districts in that area have spent probably close to 40 or 50 million dollars over the last uh, 10 years. So uh, the groundwater users have, all, have been trying to be part of the solution. I mean, everybody's known this day was going to come, but uh, it was, a, it was a, a good wake up call for us that the day has come. We either start using less water and be more efficient or Idaho's economy is going to suffer. We have a big stake in the sustainability of the Eastern Snake Plain Aquifer. And one way for everyone to look at it is that the decline in spring flows is really an indicator of what's happening to the overall health of the aquifer. We really, as a community of water users, including the state, need to do something about that steady decline. Growing cities in the eastern Snake Plain also have a lot at stake. Idaho Falls Mayor Rebecca Casper explains. I don't know of any um, city leader in any community that wants to be in the position of turning down a business opportunity because you don't have the, the water rights available. Clearly, something had to be done to bring the water supplies in the Snake Plain region into balance with the heavy demands. So the Idaho Water Resource Board is engaged in a water sustainability initiative. The Idaho legislature earmarked $15 million for finding long-term solutions. The legislature realized we better do something, and they graciously gave us a appropriation that will help us come up and build bigger and better aquifer recharge sites, find ways to conserve water, and really to start managing the water more effectively, but more importantly, with more money. Several years ago, the Idaho Water Resource Board worked with stakeholders to craft a comprehensive aquifer management plan for the Eastern Snake Plain region. The plan calls for multiple strategies to create a net increase of 600,000 acre feet of water via aquifer recharge, groundwater to surface water conversions, developing new or enhanced existing water storage sites, water demand reduction, and cloud seeding. Many people support recharging the Snake Plain Aquifer to meet growing demands. The strategy is first to stabilize aquifer levels, basically stop the drop. Okay, that's what we need to do. And, and then second, begin to rebuild the aquifer. Really the biggest strategy uh, that we're employing is managed aquifer recharge. We have maxed out on sweet spots for reservoirs 
So yeah. then, so the, logically, the only thing you have left is to say, how can we take advantage of this vast underground storage space that we have, that's free, that Mother Nature gave us? And that leads us to recharge. We need managed recharge. It's, it's the cheapest, easiest way to go. That's the whole idea. It doesn't make a difference if you're a, a domestic user, if you're a groundwater pumper or a surface irrigator or aquaculture. The, the recharge projects, if we can get the kind of water we need into the aquifer and be able to stabilize or start to raise the, the levels, it's a benefit for, for the entire state. The Idaho Water Board came to the same conclusion, directing staff to sign contracts with canal companies throughout the Eastern Snake Plain to recharge the aquifer. They strive to do this work during the winter, when surplus water flows are available. Let's take a quick tour of several recharge sites. The state uses existing infrastructure, unlined canals and lakes and injection wells to recharge the aquifer. In the Upper Snake River Valley, Bruce Grover talks about recharging the aquifer with the Great Feeder Canal. I'm working with the Water Resource Board, ask us to uh, recharge 170 CFS. Uh, we've been going for just two weeks uh, tonight since we started. Uh, had a little bit of problem with the cold weather and the ice, but things have went well. They ran the recharge line down two unlined canals, the Harrison and the Rudy. The water seeps into the ground long before reaching the Snake River. All the water that goes down is gonna, you know, is gonna help. Uh, you know, it, uh, who knows how long it takes this water to move to where, but we're high in the system, so it's, uh, we feel like it's gonna have a, a positive uh, contribution. Next stop, St. Anthony. Uh, we're running uh, water that, uh, from the Henry's Fork out to Eaton Lakes. So we're using uh, about 170 cubic feet per second of the State Water Board's water right for recharge. Fremont Madison was able to run recharge water for about two weeks for a total of 5,400 acre feet. The water seeped into the aquifer from the St. Anthony Union Canal and the Egin Lakes. Below American Falls Dam, multiple recharge projects occurred in the winter of 2015. This is the first time in the 50 years that we've ran water in the winter. Um, currently, we have about 50 CFS flowing down our canal to Murtaugh Lake. This last week, uh, we just passed over 120 days uh, this winter, so uh, we started October 27th. The seepage occurs uh, along the way in the canal system, down to Murtaugh Lake and in the lake itself. Murtaugh Lake is just a few miles downstream. It's a re-regulation reservoir that holds about 7,000 uh, acre feet of water. The Twin Falls Canal Company will contribute about 15,000 acre feet to recharge efforts in 2014 to 2015. One of the best things that happened was legislature um, setting aside money for a rock for recharge. We are being compensated because it is added maintenance and liability for us to run water in the winter. Next stop, Southwest Irrigation District, south of Burley. The district is injecting water into the aquifer via abandoned wells. We're recharging just two sites currently, and we plan on opening up two more next week. It was one of the abandoned wells that was rehabbed for recharge. We found that a recharge well will take three times the amount of water that you can pump out of it. The Southwest Irrigation District is using the infrastructure from an aquifer recharge project developed by the Bureau of Reclamation in the 1990s. The water is pumped from Murtaugh Lake to recharge wells nearby. The district has a total of 12 recharge sites. Our district consists of four critical groundwater areas. We have a declining aquifer, so it's very important that recharge is one of the tools in the toolbox as far as replenishing an aquifer. The good news is that the Southwest District already is seeing groundwater levels rise as a result of the Twin Falls Canal Recharge Project nearby. Currently we've, we've seen water levels on the west side as far as a mile out, uh, 25 feet higher than they were last year at the same time. 
it's wonderful. Everything we can put in the ground is, is less, you know, it's like water, water in, a, in a bank. You know, we can draw on it for years, years to come, so it's a good thing. Next stop, Milepost 31 recharge project on the Milner Gooding Canal. Water has been flowing into the recharge basin since late October. They hope to recharge about 35,000 acre feet before irrigation season begins. It's turned out to work very well so far. We've, uh, we've uh, had some continuous flows in here of around 180 CFS. It's quite a little ways away from the, the Snake River. It's out in the middle of the plain. And with the lava rock and the type of soil it was, they figured it would take water very well. When the water flows are turned off, the water sinks into the aquifer rapidly. Well, if we shut the water out of the basin, it dissipates out and the basin will be dry in about four days' time. Well, eventually it's going to show up in the, in the aquifer in the springs or uh, well flow somewhere. All told, the Idaho Water Board expects to recharge the aquifer with more than 75,000 acre-feet of water in the winter of 2015, at a cost of over $450,000. Converting farmlands irrigated with groundwater to surface water is another solution. The Water Board has converted over 12,000 acres of farmland to surface water irrigation, reducing demand on the aquifer by 60,000 acre-feet of water. Cloud seeding efforts have been ramping up in eastern Idaho for many years. Idaho Power operates 20 cloud seeding generators on high ridges between Island Park and Soda Springs. Another 25 generators are operated by a local conservation district in the St. Anthony area. Idaho Power officials say cloud seeding can increase the impact of snowstorms by 14 percent. The cloud seeding program is progressing very well. We think that we are producing a lot of additional water. The upper snake at full build out with it, we could produce about 400,000 acre feet of additional water. All of these measures are designed to move water management in the eastern snake plain to a more sustainable level. We're excited about the state moving towards real resource management that relies on different methods to, to help stabilize the aquifer, and perhaps to, to restore it. If we get there, that would be wonderful. There's a uh, hydrologist that works for us and he said, it took us 50 years to get here. It's not, we're not gonna change things overnight. If we work together and stay away from lawsuits, we'll continue to see the state prosper. I think we just need to stick with it and stay at it. Water is important to us as it is to all other water users in the basin. I think we just need to continue to work together. And the company is willing to put out the effort to try to make sure that uh, we do our part and that we work collaboratively with other water users to try to solve the water issues that we have in southern Idaho. Well, the first strategy we have, and everybody in Idaho should participate in this one, you got to find ways to use less water, conserve, find ways to use our water two, three times, use it over and over again. The second thing that we're trying to do, we're trying to take water on the years when we have extra water that just runs out of the state as flood water, take that water, spread it out in the desert, and have it seep down and recharge the aquifer, raise the entire aquifer up.